Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to display images, pictures, in your Microsoft Access forms and reports without storing them in the database. We'll put a profile picture on the customer's form. Then we'll be able to generate some name tags with the customer's name, profile picture, and our company logo. Today's question comes from Haruki in Kawasaki, Japan, one of my Platinum members. Haruki asks, I would like to be able to print out employee name badges with their name, the company logo, and their picture. What's the best way to do this in Microsoft Access? Well, Haruki, there's tons of different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you my preferred way. Now, there are a couple of different ways to handle images in Microsoft Access. Back in the old days, all we had were OLE objects. That's called Object Linking and Embedding. You'd see that, for example, if you wanted to copy and paste an image from Microsoft Word over into Excel. All right, you'd copy it, and then you'd paste it. And you could paste a link to it. So if the original changed, then it would update all your documents and all your Excel spreadsheets and stuff with the updated image. And you could either store the image in the document, or you could just pass a reference to it so it wasn't stored. But even doing that, there was still a lot of data that was stored in the document to process that OLE image. So they're not very efficient. That's old technology. And Access keeps that technology for backward compatibility, so you can still use it if you want to. But personally, I don't like it. Then somewhere around 2007, I think, Microsoft added something called an attachment field to Access Tables. This allowed you to actually attach documents and pictures and all kinds of stuff into your tables and they'd be stored in the Microsoft Access file, much like you can store a picture in an email as an attachment and send it to someone. The problem with storing images and other documents inside of your Access database is your database gets big, it gets slow, it gets bloated, and it's not very efficient. I've done some tests on databases with OLE objects and attachments stored in them, and it's not pretty. It's not the best way to handle dealing with images and other file types. So the best way to handle images is to store the path and file name of the image, where it's located and what its name is, in a text field. Then we'll use the image control to display it, both in our forms and our reports. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download, by the way. You can go grab this from my website if you want to. I'll put a link down below the description of the video. You can go find it, download it, or put this in your own database if you prefer. Now, Haruki wants to do employee name badges. We'll do the same thing with customers. I already got a customer form set up. Okay, so here's me. And let's say I want to put a little profile picture right here. I want to display it on the customer form, and we'll make a little report for it too. So the first thing I need to do is to put a field in my table to store the path and file name of the picture itself. Now here on my Windows desktop, I've got a folder that I created called Images. Let's open that up. And in there I've got two pictures of me. Hi me, how you doing? All right, Rick1 and Rick2.jpg. And if you click right here in the address bar, you'll see that's the full path to where your images are. That's where I've got mine. So I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. Control C, copy that. So now I just gotta paste that in and then put Rick1 or Rick2.jpg in my table, okay? Now, one note, if you're working on a network, if you're sharing your database with other people, you have to make sure you use a folder location that is the same for everybody. Like on my network, I've got a server Z drive. It's mapped to Z for everybody. You could go server and then a folder name or a, or a drive letter, but it's got to be the same for everybody if you're sharing your database. Okay, so back in the database, let's go to our customer table, design view. Let's add a field down here. I'll call this profile picture. Don't use the word just picture. Picture is a reserved word in access. Avoid using just the word picture. Okay, short text is fine. 255 characters should be plenty long for your path. Okay, I'm going to save that, close it down. Let's go back to the customer form, design. Let's make some room here. I'm going to just take this stuff right here and just slide it down underneath. So we got some extra room here. And let's make this guy a little shorter. So I've got room for the picture to go right there. 
But first, let's go to Add Existing Fields, find that Profile Picture field that we added to the table, click and drag and drop it right there, because we're going to have to have this on the form so we can change it, right? So we can put in a new picture. And I'm going to slide this over here like that, and this can just say picture. This is the label. That's okay. And maybe for class purposes, let's slide this over here like this, make this a little smaller, put this guy right up next to it, because this can be pretty long, right? Okay. Now let's put an image control right here. So go up to your controls. Now there's a bunch of different things in here. There's the OLE objects, the unbound object frame. There's the bound object frame. I cover these in my different classes. Access beginner six, I believe I cover this stuff. But what you're looking for is that guy right there, the image control. Very important that you use this one, image control. All right, click on that. Draw a box right here where you want it to go. Now, the insert picture dialog box appears. We don't want to just insert one picture. All right, we're going to bind this control to a field in the table. So I'm going to hit cancel. So now I've got an empty image control sitting right here. Okay, open up its properties. Here's the property sheet. Now right now it's called image 32. All right, let's call this profile picture image because this guy is already called profile picture, so we can't use that name, right? That's profile picture. So this is now profile picture image, but we're gonna bind it to the profile picture field. You can have two controls that are bound to the same field. So this and this are both gonna get their data from that profile picture field in the table. This will display it as text. This will display the actual picture. Okay, see how that works? Now all we have to do is put some data in there. So let's close this, save it, close it, open up the customer form. All right, now we've got to put some stuff in here, right? Remember that path and file name? So I'm going to go Control-V, paste, because remember I put that in my clipboard earlier. C, users, Richard, desktop images. Use a shorter folder if you can, right? C, pictures, or your Z drive if you've got a network, okay? But I'm slash, or backslash, rick one dot jpeg and then there it is see that let's go to the next one let's go to the next record here i'll paste and then rick 2jpeg ready click there we go see and if you move between them there they are all right it's displaying the picture found at this location without storing it in your database you're not making your database big and bloated by storing pictures in it. And if you want to change these pictures, you can do so outside the database, right? You can replace that file with something else. Now, I do have to admit I cheated a little bit because what I did was I hit shift tab instead of tab because watch, if you go to a new one here, if I paste, if I go rick1.jpg and hit tab, it, you don't see anything happen because this came in at the end of the tab order. So as soon as you hit tab, it goes to the next record. It inserts the picture, but you don't see anything happen. The first time I ran through this when I was practicing earlier, I'm like, oh, I can't let them see that the first time through. So I'm showing you what I did. The way to fix that, okay, is just put this properly in the tab order. So let's say we got, uh, we got orders down here and contacts. Okay, and you can put these fields back wherever you want them. All right, but just put the profile picture in front of these guys in the tab order. Remember the tab order? If you're not familiar with the tab order, I got videos on tab order, okay? I'll put links down below if you haven't uh, seen this yet. We just scroll down here and find profile picture, okay? And just slide it up before the contact button, for example. So it's not the last thing in the tab order. Hit okay, save changes. And now if I go to a new record here, all right, I can go paste and then Rick one.jpg and when I hit tab I'm sitting on the context button and you see that actually happen okay <laughs> sometimes I show you what I want you to see the first time and then I'll explain it okay <laughs> so now how do we make name badges out of this well we do it pretty much the same way we did it with the form but just do it in a report so let's close this Haruki wants name badges so let's uh, click on customer T click on labels name badges are pretty much labels Right? You just kind of format it a little bit bigger. Find a label that matches the size you want and use that for your name badge. I did a video a little while ago printing on Dymo labels. I'll put a link to that down below if you want to. Uh, Dymo labels also have a name badge sized label you can use for that too. But I'm going to pick sheet fed. 
Let's go turn off custom label sizes. I'm going to go down to Avery. I usually use Avery labels. Then just find something that fits about what your, your name badge is. Let's say uh, this one here. Let's say that's three across, two inches by two inches. That's good. That's a good size for a, a name badge label. Now, if you want to put text in here, all right, pick your font size, your font weight, all that stuff. All right, build your prototype label. So first name, space, last name. All right, that's good enough. If you got a title in here, maybe. All right, next. And if you want to sort it, fine, I'm not going to sort it. All right, and let's go to Modify Label Design. So there's the label it built for us. You can resize it, do whatever else you want with it. I've got videos on all that stuff. Now do the same thing you did before. Just go up to the control box here. Find the image control. Drop an image right here for the profile picture. Okay, cancel this. Open up the properties, right? Go to Control Source, Profile Picture, and let's name it Profile Picture Image. I mean, you can name this one Profile Picture if you want to. It's good to stay consistent, though. Okay, let's close this and open it up and see what it looks like. Let's come down here. Labels Customer T. I would, of course, rename this to uh, Customer Label R. Okay, let's right-click, go to Print Preview, and there we go. All right, there's our mailing labels, our employee name badges. Now, if you want to put the actual company logo on here, which is the same for everybody, go back to Design View. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller, just so we got some room. And down here, we'll put another image. All right, grab that, drop it here. This time, when it asks you for the picture, give it the actual image file for your company logo. And I just dropped one in my images folder to use, right? Hit OK. And there you can see it's now in the label, right? That's a static image now. That one won't change. This one will. So maybe you want to rearrange this a little bit like so. Let's put this over here on the side, like the name. I don't know. However you want to see it, right? I am not an artiste. Let's maybe format this, make it a little bit bigger. Let's see. Let's see what this looks like. Save it, close it, right click, print preview. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad looking. Right? There you go. There's your name badges. So that's how you put images in your reports and in your forms. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for members, I show you how to add a button that you can click on and browse for a file, and then that file will get put right in your picture field. This way, you don't have to copy and paste the path name or type in the file name or any of that stuff. You just browse for it. Right, here I am in the database. Click the Browse button. Dialog box appears. Pick the picture. Hit OK. And boom, there it goes. And that's it. That's all you got to do. That is covered in the Extended Cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my Extended Cut videos. Gold members get access to download the databases that I build in these videos. I've also put some links down below to other courses and videos where I cover stuff dealing with images. Access Beginner 6 is Image Basics. That's just copying and pasting images into your database, which is okay if you've got a few images, a few small things. I wouldn't recommend doing that for lots of images, though. But it's simple, and it works. Access Expert 4 goes more into working with images and reports. Access Expert 24 covers displaying images from a website. So if you have images on your web page that you want to display in your Access database in your forms and reports, you can do that as well. My Access Imaging Seminar covers all kinds of different stuff, pretty much anything you want to know about working with images with Access, including copying a file from a different location on your network and having it automatically copied to your central file repository, wherever your server is. So that's pretty cool stuff. And then my ABCD, my Access Business Contact Database Part 5, covers full document management. In addition to the picture stuff that we did today, it also covers working with PDF files, attaching Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, keeping them in a central repository, again, like I said, instead of embedding them inside your database, all kinds of stuff. I'll put links to all of this stuff down below in the description window. But if you just want the browsing for a file part, all you got to do is become a silver member. 
Silver members get access to all my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.